How Chiropractic Works, Part 3. What exactly is proprioception? So you've seen this chart and what do the input signals mean? Why do we need them? Why are they important to the human body? Why are they important to movement? Proprioception is the ability to recognize where your body is in space. One of the ways we can test this in the office is by having a patient bring their finger to their nose with their eyes closed. If you try this at home, do it with your eyes closed and go slow. Notice how our patient misses on the right. So her right-sided proprioception is poor and her left-sided proprioception is appropriate. Chiropractic or any type of properly done spinal manipulation can improve the proprioception sensory input signals. Proprioception is an evolutionary design utilized by animals that have muscles and joints. It's a design that predates our existence as homo sapiens, and this design has been around for a very long time. Dee Dee Palmer accidentally discovered the benefits of this design with the adjustment, or book slap, of William Harvey Lillard. The YouTube universe has probably convinced most of the world that this is chiropractic. This is not chiropractic. These are chiropractic manipulations or adjustments performed by a chiropractor. Chiropractic is a scope of practice. A scope of practice is what a professional can and cannot do as determined by their government or regulatory body. The scope of practice I'm about to describe is relevant to the great state of California. And California Department of Consumer Affairs sits over the Acupuncture Board, the Automotive Bureau, Chiropractic Board, Dental Board, Medical Board, Naturopathic Board, Optometry Board, Osteopathic Medical Board, Physical Therapy Board, Psychology Board. If we click on the Chiropractic Board here and we go over to the Rules and Regulations, click on that and scroll down to the scope of practice section, we notice a duly licensed chiropractor may use all necessary mechanical, hygienic, and sanitary measures incident to the care of the body, including but not limited to air, cold, diet, exercise, heat, light, massage, physical culture, rest, ultrasound, water, and physical therapy techniques. A duly licensed chiropractor may treat any condition, disease, or injury in any patient, as long as the methods and treatment do not constitute the practice of medicine by exceeding the legal scope of chiropractic practice. I want to simply point out here that the chiropractic scope of practice is much larger than simply adjusting. Within the chiropractic scope of practice, chiropractors can perform assessment, evaluation, diagnosis, treatment, nutritional therapy, diet counseling, order x-rays, MRIs, blood work, perform massage, physical therapy, rehabilitation, design exercise programs, and adjust. Chiropractors can counsel patients on their diet and help them lose weight that is within the scope of their practice. Chiropractors can help patients with their cholesterol levels. Now that might seem a bit strange, but a chiropractic doctor can order a patient's blood work, check the patient's cholesterol levels, counsel the patient on their diet, exercise, and recommend lifestyle changes. The doctor can then go back and reorder blood work six to eight weeks later to see if the recommendations were effective. This is within the scope of their practice. Granted, 91% of patients will go elsewhere for this service, but it is within the scope of their practice granted by their state or legislative governing bodies. So when I answer this question, chiropractic works. I'm coming from the perspective of what chiropractic spinal manipulations can affect. Chiropractic works for proprioceptive afferent deficits. Chiropractic does not work for surgical, pathological, or infectious diseases. In other states, chiropractors can deliver babies, can prescribe medications, and can perform minor surgeries. I want to point out that chiropractors are authorized to give health care advice as defined by their legal definition of what they can and can't do. I don't think our critics understand this. Our critics are blending and confusing health care with medicine. When a chiropractor gives health care advice, our critics think this is defined as medical advice. Chiropractors giving medical advice are operating outside the scope of their practice and can have their licenses revoked at least in the state of California. The reason I point that out is because it might better explain how they come up with their interpretations of chiropractic. Watch their criticism of chiropractic and judge for yourself if they are mistaking healthcare advice for medical advice. About half of chiropractors do the bullshit stuff. They do the extra, the extraneous wellness stuff. So, and this is what you're getting with chiropractic. You're getting a bullshit doctor. Chiropractors have ideas above their station and erroneously believe that they're part of the medical community when they are not. Well, I don't know if you know the history of chiropractors. I, I, I do. And somehow or another, this has been grandfathered in. Like, the one, I told this to a friend of mine the other day, he was talking to me about chiropractors. I go, do you know how much time uh, a, a chiropractor spends in medical school? They go, how much? I go, zero. Right, yeah. Zero time. How chiropractic works. As you understand the proprioceptive model, you see more clearly how all spinal manipulations positively or negatively affect human movement. Let us break down and expand upon this model. There are 640 muscles in the human body. When muscles move, they send signals into the cerebellum, generating our motor program, controlling the coordination and timing of muscles. It may seem bizarre, but an injury to the right shoulder may cause a left hip problem. 
Now, like our Tourette's patients in the last video, when you look at it from this perspective, it might not make sense. But it becomes much more clear when you look at it from this perspective. There are 360 joints in the human body sending signals into the cerebellum as well. An injury to a joint bounces through the nervous system, causing primary, secondary, or tertiary coordination and muscle timing issues. A properly delivered spinal manipulation, once again, regardless of the name of the practitioner, can eliminate this dysfunction. An inappropriate spinal manipulation can wreak havoc on the nervous system's output negatively.